Right, so back with another video. We got the genuine Toyota 90915-YZZE2. And I got the Fleet Guard equivalent LF3615 lube filter. So we've got a new Fleet Guard filter. We've got a used pre opened Toyota one here. I don't have Toyota box, they fairly standard, they just have Toyota in the part number. Fleet Guard, we got Fleet Guard genuine parts. Lube filter, made in Indonesia. Very standard. Filter itself. LF3615 Fleet Guard, barcode made in Indonesia, and then got the fitting instructions on there. Toyota one, a bit of a fancy design on there. Toyota auto filter, it's also got Denso written on there, must be made by Denso with their part number. Made in Thailand. This particular one's made in Thailand, not Japan. Japanese, I assume. And then installation instructions written instead of instead of not pictures like all the fleet guards. Size. Like pretty well the same. They look good on the outside. So the fleet guard comes wrapped in plastic, which is good. That's nice standard. Keeps the oil, the, anything out from getting inside there. The Toyotas come with that too. And they also come with a pre-greased gasket. They have a nice white grease on them when you get them. Um, which is good and it helps you do that especially if you're a beginner or something and you forget the mental oil it so I'll take this off now we will weigh them just on the being aware that the Toyota's had oil in it so it's element is already soaked so it Probably going to weigh a bit more than actually uh, would dry. 241, 249, so pretty well the same sort of weight. Then we got a same amount of holes. The Toyota ones are a bit bigger. They look considerably bigger, but in the scheme of the size of this oil filter, they're not really that much bigger. O-ring seal. Uh, the fleet guard feels a little bit more sort of pliable. It's actually shaped things. Right, so both of these they're not actually, they appeared to be just a flat round o-ring they're actually they've got a bit of a lip in there, they both do and they sit in under that lip, they're actually quite hard to get out which is nice they're definitely not going to fall out on you, they're a nice ceiling ring on there so I'll go ahead and get this fleet guard one open and then see what they're like on the inside. Alright, right, so we've got them both open and we'll have a look at what we got. In terms of the base plate, apart from the holes in the Toyota, they look quite similar. The fleet guard's got 
One, two, three, four rows of thread. The Ida's got four the same. So they're about fairly well on par. In terms of the design of the actual filter, Toyota here. It's got a N-capless design. So we've got the spring plate there that's got a built-in little relief valve and that sits on the bottom there so that's how it sits inside the filter it's got a mitt a nice well fitting there's not really any movement of that on the center tube itself that fits nicely the gasket and fits Seals all around the base plate nicely too. Good valve there. Nice and pliable. Just some standard rubber. Uh, so the media itself is actually glued all together. So it's see there's no center tube down in there. Glued at the top and then these pleats are glued at the top of each one and it's got this metal tube which sits down on there doesn't actually seal on on there I think that relies no the glue doesn't actually touch that I'm not quite sure how that was designed to seal on there but there's no rubber or nothing but the top does seal nicely on there that's a nice push fit on there. The media itself it's just standard cellulose. We will cut it open to see how long it is. But really interesting design. It certainly maximizes the space inside the filter for media itself. Now the fleet guard, it's more of a traditional design. Got the media, the metal end caps. They um, not quite as nice a fit, I'd say, on the thing, but it's got no movement in it at all, so that's nice. Pliable. Which one I sit. Move that way. Doesn't really appear to seal as a no return valve. It's interesting. But that certainly makes a good sealer in the top to stop the oil getting out between the canister and the thing there. In terms of the spring, what do we got? It's a little... Little reinforcement plate there for the spring reinforces it against the can, helps it sit in its proper spot so it doesn't move around. That's nice, and it's got a proper spiral compression spring. These have seen in the past, these can come from the factory just a little bit bent, and then they don't seal properly on the bottom, or they're not bent, and it's quite right to put the right amount of tension on, and they essentially the whole, makes the whole field useless. So I much prefer a nice coil spring as a alternative to this bad boy so in terms of the relief valve on the Toyota it's built into that spring 
and on the fleet guard that's just a standard inside the filter there you can see down in there where it is it's just quite a nice canister and glue you can see it's got nice fair amount in there but not so much that it's overflowing everywhere there's a little bit there or there but it's not bad nice locating holes so it sits well in its canister and nice well formed it's quite a thick base plate for the size of the filter and a nice spiral tube holes are a little bit bigger than the Toyota one actual Toyota center tube looks to be about the same size cans themselves fleet guard feels a little bit more robust we got point six point seven Toyota a little bit less about point four point five so that is a little bit thinner fleet guards a bit more robust under the car there they both got the notches for your tool so they come off easy enough I'll get these media cut out and this one sort of taken apart and we'll see what sort of amount of media we got in each and so just looking at the vibe the uh, Andy drone back valve I had worked out I was actually looking at it backwards this is the top and so when that sits over there that makes a nice seal with the any drain back and that sits in there all nice and sealed so it does seal well on there there's nothing wrong with that drain back valve at all right so we've got all the media cut out uh, in terms of total length, the fleet guard come in about 1.15 metres. And the Toyota's about 1.3. So, got about 15 centimetres more metre on it. But I found, even though they don't have the metal end caps, I found that the height by the time... You cut the glue out of the top of the Toyota filter that holds it together. They're actually about the same. They're on both around uh, 60 mil in height. So the Toyota does have a bit more. I wouldn't call it a whole lot more. Um, leave it up to you to decide. Maybe you think that difference is important or not. It's not meters difference like I've seen in a few other filters sometimes. It's 15 centimeters, but it is bigger. Um, they're both just standard cellulose. This one's used, so it's a bit harder to look at, but it's just standard cellulose. I have a look at it under the microscope. So that's the fleet guard cellulose under the microscope. It's a bit, there's not really much point. I've had a look at this under the microscope and it's just black. So there's not really any point showing you that. So overall, what do we reckon? So in terms of end caps, seals, they're both quite nice. The fleet guard has got a bit more thickness in it. Uh... But they're both not going to fall out. I think these seals, you know, there's not really anything different enough in them to be worried about. The holes, overall, there's not a, a huge amount of difference in the hole size, but it is there. The Toyota's a bit bigger. They 
Yeah, both seal nicely on the end there. Fleet guards a little bit tighter on there. In terms of the spiral cheats, the fleet guards got a lot more and a lot bigger holes in it. Fair bit more oil flow through there. The Toyota is quite it's quite thin like that's only looking at it. Point six, just thinner than the fleet guard can is. It's about the same as the Toyota can. The fleet guard is, seems quite a bit stronger than that since it's crimped instead of just rolled. I like the idea of having metal end caps for me personally. The glue on the media doesn't really do it that much for me. I mean. By the time you cut the glue off, they're about the same height anyway, so why should you not have metal end caps? Because these springs, I've seen them before where these springs have had an issue. Where they bend or twist or you just don't know. Whereas these, if they're in there, they're going to be putting pressure on and they're going to be putting pressure in the right direction. The little caps just to add a bonus. Oh, they're gonna be pushing on it. No matter what, that's got a lot more tension in it than that does that hardly. Because that's nice, nice spring. So, in terms of the center tube and the spring, and I mean, we've got 15 centimeters more. I would hazard to say that these would be the same micron rating. It's just normal cellulose. The can on the fleet guard is a bit thicker as well and a bit more robust. So, this one, this is about a, uh, how much are they, about $20, $25 filter. This is a 5 to $10 filter, depending on where you get them from, but it's just average from what I've found. The tyre breakers for me, I mean... Normally it would be the amount of media, but it sort of seems negligible that tiebreaker for me are these three parts here. The fleet guard's got a higher seal. It's got more there. It's going to seal better on there. A much nicer spring. One that you just know is going to work. You don't have to worry about these things being bent or knocked or whatever. Knocked out of place. This doesn't even have a seal on the bottom, which has me a little bit worried about oil bar bypassing the filter altogether. And then this is a lot more heavy duty. They're both light, but this solid construction metal end caps just glued nice. Decent amount of glue in there. There's a lot more glue in there than on the Toyota one. Um... So for me, I would tend, I reckon I would tend to go the fleet guard one. I mean, Toyota know what they're doing, but in terms of robustness and being guaranteed to get something that is just going to work out of the box, I like the design of the fleet guard a fair bit. Good spring, good seal, nice solid construction, the Toyota. It might be good technology, they would have researched it, but it doesn't just quite do it for me. It might do it for you. You might like them, but I'd be going with the fleet guard. One thing that I also noticed when I was taking them apart was the fleet guard has got that solid steel crimped band there. And holds the media together nicely. You have to cut it to get it out of there. The Toyota doesn't have any sort of crimping. You can see that line across there where it glued. So that was glued on both ends together instead of crimped. And while I was cutting it apart, that was a very weak spot. That was the first point to break. I had Normally, 
this is not the knife, but you put the knife in there and go to, and press against it to cut around and cut it out. As soon as I put the knife on that Toyota one, that seam burst apart on the opposite side. So I'm not quite sure about that, whether it's because it's used or not, but it seems a little bit more robust on the fleet guard side.